Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Donald Lozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Lozello's Sports Medicine Report. On today's episode, I'm going to cover entrapment of the axillary nerve. This condition is also known as quadrilateral space syndrome. The axillary nerve is a nerve in the upper body. It carries nerve signals from nerve root levels C5 and C6, which is located in the lower cervical spine, or the cervical spine is the medical terminology for the neck. The axillary nerve is the motor innervation for the deltoid muscle and also for the teres minor muscle. The teres minor is one of the posterior rotator cuff muscles. The axillary nerve is the sensory innervation for the skin over the lower part of the deltoid muscle. The axillary nerve is also known as the circumflex nerve. The axillary nerve enters an anatomical area called the quadrilateral space along with the circumflex humeral artery. The axillary nerve can be entrapped in the quadrilateral space. That is where the name quadrilateral space syndrome comes from. Now the quadrilateral space, obviously it has four sides to it. That's why it's called the quadrilateral space. It is an anatomical area. Its boundaries, its superior boundary is the teres minor muscle. The inferior boundary is the teres major muscle. The medial boundary is the long head of the triceps and the lateral boundary is the humerus bone. So those are the boundaries of the quadrilateral space and the quadrilateral space is the area where the axillary nerve gets entrapped. It, all, it gets entrapped along with the artery that I mentioned, the uh, circumflex humeral artery. Entrapment of the axillary nerve is fairly rare when we compare it numbers-wise, incidence-wise, to some other upper body entrapments. But it still does occur. This is an injury that occur, can occur in sports for traumatic reasons or because of stretch or compression. And it can also occur outside of sports. In sports, it can occur for that traumatic reason. In any area where there is some type of impact, when we speak about football, uh, even basketball, baseball, collisions, rugby, wrestling, mixed martial arts, and then the compression and the stretching injuries can occur to the axillary nerve in sports like baseball and volleyball. Anytime where there is a lot of overhead activity, a entrapment at the quadrilateral space can occur. It can occur along with another type of traumatic injury. It can be a direct trauma to the anterior shoulder or to the posterior shoulder. It can also occur if there is a fracture or if there is a shoulder dislocation. There can be entrapment of the axillary nerve. Symptoms of axillary nerve entrapment, like I said, it's also known as quadrilateral space syndrome include poorly localized pain in the anterior part of the shoulder and the posterior part of the shoulder. This pain is often described as dull, burning, and a deep ache, or it can be described as all those. There's usually also paresthesia. Paresthesia is numbness, tingling, or burning over the lateral part of the shoulder and the lateral part of the upper arm. This pain often is reproduced when we perform what is called shoulder flexion, that is bringing the arm up forward. There can be weakness in overhead activities, uh, anything from throwing to lifting to just holding your head up if you are uh, even changing a light bulb doing something that simple. There can be weakness in that. Also, there can be weakness when we are doing shoulder abduction, that is raising the arm out to the side and weakness in shoulder external rotation. Here's external rotation. So there can be weakness in those activities. With any long-standing nerve entrapment condition, Atrophy is possible. Atrophy is when the muscle actually gets smaller in size because that muscle is not getting the proper nerve signal. It's not being used. And if the entrapment is long standing, then the muscle is going to shrink in size. So that's where the atrophy comes from. 
quadrilateral space syndrome, also symptoms, uh, there can be no symptoms when we're at rest. Then all of a sudden we try to use that uh, area and the symptoms begin. Also, this condition is often confused with other shoulder pathologies and it's easily confused with other shoulder pathologies, especially rotator cuff syndrome, just because of the location of the quadrilateral space. When we think about the quadrilateral space, if there is direct pressure put on that area, if that's where the entrapment is at, then there's going to be a reproduction of the symptoms. Usually those symptoms will become worse. Like I stated before, there can be atrophy and there can be weakness in the deltoid muscle and in the teres minor muscle, which is the reason that we see the weakness in the shoulder abduction and in the shoulder external rotation. So anytime there's a nerve entrapment condition, the muscles that it innervates, there can be weakness in those muscles. Contributing factors for quadrilateral space syndrome are almost the same as they are with most overuse type of injuries. Like I said, now this can occur with blunt trauma. So those contributing factors obviously are a little bit different because boom, you just had an impact in that area. But it can occur with the stretching and the compression of the nerve, especially doing overhead activities like I spoke about throwing and volleyball when you're reaching out, when you're practicing your serve. So these and other sports where you're constantly working overhead, you want to be very mindful of this condition because it is a, a more common condition with throwing athletes and with volleyball players. So what you want to do, you always want to make sure that your technique is good. You always want to make sure that you are getting adequate rest between your practices and your training sessions. You want to make sure that you prevent this condition. Nerve entrapment conditions are preventable, but they do occur and they do reoccur. So you want to work very hard at eliminating the contributing factors that are outside of the body. Those are the extrinsic contributing factors and the contributing factors that are inside the body. Those contributing factors can be strength and balance, can be poor posture, it can be poor posture while you're training, or like I said, inadequate training practices. So you want to make sure that you do everything you can to eliminate the extrinsic factors and the intrinsic factors of an axillary nerve entrapment. If you start to feel symptoms that I just described in the shoulder, do not hesitate. Seek professional care. Do not try to self-diagnose yourself. Many people have done this and been incorrect. There's a lot of outstanding information that you could find on the internet and on this video and on other videos about this condition. But you need to get a professional evaluation and you need to get professional care to make sure that this is the condition that you have and that there is not another serious underlying pathology that could be causing this condition such as a space occupying lesion. Now this part is a disclaimer. Please remember, this video does not replace you seeing a medical professional. This video is an instructional video for medical professionals and for athletes and for shoulder pain sufferers to learn more about axillary nerve entrapment also known as quadrilateral space. So please do not think that this video replaces seeing a doctor. Do yourself a big favor and get a professional evaluation. If you start to feel these symptoms, act quickly. Anytime there's a nerve impingement condition, there can be a sequence of events that occurs. Like I mentioned, pain, weakness, atrophy. If you do not get this corrected, it will be a problem for a long period of time. So please do yourself a favor and take action quickly. When we speak about the axillary nerve entrapment, there are several things that you want to think about. First of all, you want to have a professional assess your biomechanics. If you're a throwing athlete or if you're a volleyball player, any type of overhead athlete, have a coach who's more experienced than you. Have a trainer who is more experienced than you in how the body works. You can even videotape yourself and see if something needs to be 
corrected so that your technique improves. That is something that I recommend to everyone. Improve your technique. Have someone who is more experienced and knowledgeable help you to assess your technique and see if anything needs to be changed. Because oftentimes when we are doing repetitive activities, we develop strength imbalances or we have some type of biomechanical fault and that contributes to an overuse injury. So you want to make sure that you are using proper technique. Also, just like any other condition, the quicker you act, the quicker in most cases that you will recover. Axillary nerve entrapment is a condition that usually recovers with non-operative treatments, basically with conservative care. As a doctor of chiropractic, I see this condition in my office, and according to statistics, it happens very rarely, but I have seen it several times, more than several times over the years. And it is something that can be treated. You want to make sure that you take action quickly. I know I've said that many times, but you do not want to hesitate. If you think you have this condition, or if you think you have another condition that is similar, or you're not quite sure what's going on, and you notice pain, you notice weakness, numbness, tingling, burning, take action and see a medical professional. Also with this condition, your medical professional may have you do some imaging. You may need an MRI. MRI is going to show you the soft tissue at the quadrilateral space. It's a very helpful tool. Now, when we speak about the prevention and the recovery of this condition, several things that you want to keep in mind. First of all, I already mentioned you want to eliminate any extrinsic and intrinsic factors. So you want to eliminate strength imbalances. Oftentimes, you may need to stretch the posterior aspect of the shoulder, the posterior rotator cuff muscles, and, well, they're located in the posterior shoulder and what's called the posterior capsule. I have a video on stretching the posterior capsule. I will put a link to it to that at the end of this video so you'll be able to see that. But those are things that are very important, eliminating any strength imbalances and stretching the posterior shoulder. Also, nerve slide exercises may be very helpful for you. Nerve slide exercises are non-resistance, non-exertion motions, very precise motions that help to lessen scar tissue entrapment of nerves. I have a video on a nerve slide for the axillary nerve. I will also put a link to that at the end of this video. So you could watch those and learn how to do a nerve slide for the axillary nerve. This is a condition that can stick around and last a long time. So you want to eliminate or decrease the amount of the activity that exacerbates or causes this condition. That's why I was speaking about before about correcting biomechanics. So have someone correct your technique. It's going to help you a great deal because it's going to help to eliminate an activity that is causing this condition. Again, axillary nerve entrapment is called quadrilateral space syndrome. It is impinging on the axillary nerve. Please take action immediately if you start to feel symptoms. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report, where I covered axillary nerve entrapment. Like I stated several times, it is also known as quadrilateral space syndrome. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance, and Minimize Injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book, and you can also connect with me on other social media platforms. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube page. It's just my name, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. I have a large number of videos on my page. If you have suggestions, feedback, or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for viewing today's episode. And always remember, train hard, train smart, utilize nutritional strategies that work for you, stay injury-free, and accomplish your goals.